now uh, live on YouTube. Good evening, everyone, and a warm welcome to the Rushcliffe Borough Council Standards Committee meeting. Uh, I'd like to remind you all that the Standards Committee meeting is being live streamed on YouTube. A recording of the meeting will be available afterwards on the Council's YouTube channel. In addition, under the Local Authorities Executive Arrangements, Meetings and Access to Information, England Regulations of 2012, other people may film, record, tweet, or blog from this meeting. The use of any such images or sound recordings is not under the Council's control. So moving on to the first item of the agenda, apologies. Apologies from John Blackreacher. Uh, thank you. So minutes of the last meeting of from October. Somebody would like to propose those as an accurate record of the meeting. Thank you, Councillor Gray. Councillor Mason, all those in favour? Thank you very much. I'll sign those as an accurate record. Um, declarations of interest. Okay, that takes us on to the, the being none to substantive um, items this evening. The first one being cases and work updates. Um, so. Thank you. Um, this is the first of my two reports this evening. Um, members are familiar with this report, which is an update to advise on the complaints received by me since the last meeting, which was October last year. Um, it also aims to help in identifying any issue areas where training or education might assist councillors in implementing the understanding of the regime. The recommendation of the report is that committee receive the report and note it. And in terms of the supporting information leading into that recommendation, the summary of complaints since the last meeting is at Appendix A. The appendix sets out the complaints that I've received. And since the implementation of the revised standards regime, there have been a total of 104 complaints and two since the last meeting in October. And they, the two new complaints are at page 14. Um, the complaints are detailed to confirm whether they relate to a borough, parish or town councillor and if the complaint is made by a member of the public or another borough, parish or town councillor. The table also confirms the nature of the complaint and any action taken to address it. Members are reminded that the information is deliberately briefed to protect the integrity of the complaints process. In terms of other work, um, I continue to support the member development group in relation to the member training programme and have also supported the working group in the development of the code of conduct guidance arrangement, arrangements guidance on the application of the arrangements and also the register of interests form. So members, this report is produced, uh, as I said, in terms of recommendation to note and receive the report. Uh, thank you very much. Any, any questions or observations? Uh, in that case, can I ask if, some, if there's somebody willing to um, move the recommendation of the report to, re to, uh, to receive and note this? Councillor Phillips, thank you. Councillor Mason, all those in favour? Thank you very much. Um, so item five, back to you, Mrs. Sol. Thank you. Um, to turn to the second of my reports on the Code of Conduct. At the last meeting of the Standards Committee, I presented the Local Government Association Model Code of Conduct, and members resolved to establish a group to consider the LGA Model Code and uh, make any recommendations as appropriate back to this committee. And it's on that basis that this report is presented to me today. The recommendations are that the committee notes the amendments made by the group to the LGA Model Code of Conduct and that the committee refer the revised Rushcliffe Code of Conduct to the government's scrutiny group to comment and thereafter to council for adoption. The reasons for the recommendation in support of it are that the standards committee is the responsible committee at council for setting those expected standards of behaviour for members and the local government association code 
has been prepared in response to the CSPL recommendations and also has been subject to a significant amount of stakeholder consultation. Following the resolution to establish a group to consider the code, the group has met on four occasions. Um, the group has managed to get through a significant workload and has considered the LGA draft for the code of conduct, the guidance that was produced by the LGA to underpin and support that. In, in doing so, the group also went on then to consider the council's arrangements, which are the document, which is the document that basically sets out the process to be adopted when considering a complaint that's been received, and then also went on to consider the register of interest form and the guidance that sits with that. Following consideration of all of those, the group responded to use the LGA model code as a template, and having considered it, recommends uh, the recommendation is to, as I've read out, to refer it to government scrutiny group and also to full council with, with the suggested amendment. And the document is set out at Appendix A. For ease of reference, the, append the amendments are highlighted in red. To underpin the um, code of guidance, um, sorry, to underpin the code, there's also a code of guidance and the group considered that it was beneficial that that be published alongside the code. But given the length and weight of the document, the recommendation of the group that was that it be hyperlinked so that members could easily navigate the document. That is a work in progress um, and will be hopefully completed by the time um, the uh, report is referred to for council subjects to it going through the process as I've outlined. Um, adopting the code in that way just goes towards supporting the understanding and the application of it. And the guidance is produced and appended to my report at Appendix B. Having considered those two core documents, the group went on to consider the procedure for dealing with complaints, which are the arrangements, and that alongside of those amendments made to the Code of Conduct, members felt that amendments were necessary to give it the right context and to follow the document that it was seeking to support. Again, um, the document as amended is dependent at Appendix C, and the amendments are in red for ease of reference. The LGA also produced guidance um, alongside the code and the guidance on the code for dealing with complaints. And again, as with the guidance to the code, the group considered that it was beneficial to append it to the arrangements for, uh, to support understanding. And that is appended at Appendix D, the bundle. Um, following consideration of the core documents, members went on then to consider the register of interest form. And it is proposed that the register of interest will be revised in the form as set out at Appendix E and that it be supported by guidance at Appendix F. I should point out here that I have had a conversation with the chair ahead of this, this evening's meeting and the numbering in the guidance doesn't necessarily follow the numbering in the form. And given the aspirations for hyperlinking to the code and to the arrangements, it, it follows that the, the guidance should be hyperlinked to the form as well. So I will undertake to amend that numbering so that it fits with the numbering on the form and it and it's adds to the clarity there. Um, to further develop the complaints process, the group has also considered having a look at the actual complaint form, which can be brought back to another meeting of the standards committee if that continues to be a relevant consideration. Um, so just to summarise, it is recommended that the code of conduct as discussed by the group be referred to the governance group, the group for comment and thereafter for two full council for adoption. There are also um, training issues that arise as a result of a new and revised code of conduct, and they can be developed through the member working um, member development group. So, Chair, I have no further comments to make on that report, and happy to take any questions. Uh, thank you very much, and yes, conscious that hopefully we think we've done all the uh, heavy lifting, and um, tonight it's more of a uh, procedural. Uh, Exercise, but nevertheless, are there any questions, Gary? Just a couple of things. I think on interestingly, both are on page twenty-one. Um, I'm not sure what a section one by one opposite is, and I wonder if you could help me understand what that is. I think we, it's our first reference to now on there, and we should 
making it for me. Um, but yeah, if you tell me what a section one by one officer is, that would be really helpful. Okay, um, I'll give you the long answer. <laughs> uh, local government is a creature of statutes uh, established by a series of uh, local government acts. And one of the principal, because it's not a person, therefore it has to designate certain people as responsible and a decision-making framework. So we have to split between council, executive uh, and officer delegation. So there are under the law, there are a requirement for three what we call statutory officers for a council to exist. One is myself. One is the chief executive as head of paid service, and one is the section 151 officer who's the head of finance, so the chief finance officer. It's not a catchy title. It's not. <laughs> okay, thank you. Next up, we're there for an interview with his dress sense, but we'll leave that to another. <laughs> to, uh, to, uh, to another. Uh, another, another, another moment. Um, so we're, we're being asked, in effect, to send these six documents on to get to initially to governance um, group. Um, I, I don't think we're, we're, it would be remiss perhaps just to very briefly mention, so we've got the code with the amendments, other than the questions that have been, that, that have been raised, anybody have any comments or queries about the code in its current form? And we've got the guidance on the code, which we haven't altered, it is the LGA model, so I assume there's no comments or things about that. Um, there's the arrangements that we have amended, uh, and that was kind of at the last working group meeting. So any queries arising from those? Um, the arrangements guidance, again, is the, is the model, so we haven't tinkered around with those. Um, the form. Um, I've got one thing to mention, which I didn't mention before, earlier, which is I, don't, I think there's a slight discrepancy between the form and the guidance in the um, phrasing of the questions, particularly around membership of um, other groups like political parties and other, and other pressure groups. The guidance says you must, we must declare them full stop, but the form sort of intimates um, only if you're in a position of control. And I think it's just, although the guidance is quite clear, I don't think the question in the in the in the form is. So um, I'm suggesting that we perhaps just rephrase that question in the form to say, A, are you a member? And then B, so, do, I'm sure the wrong word. Um, yeah, are, are you a member? And then B, if so, in what capacity? Is that agreeable? Okay. Um, any other questions about the form? Not a question, but a comment. In the way that the form is now laid out, I think this would lend itself to using something like a Teams form, or SharePoint form, so you don't have to, so it puts itself into a spreadsheet. And it would probably be worth doing that. Um, just to make it nice and compact for everybody, you go to one place, you fill it in, it pops into a spreadsheet, and people aren't looking through it several times. And you've got everything with drop downs, so it's it's more standard, and you can analyse it a bit better rather than just think it's form. So you have to sign it. The way that will be affecting that has to be built built in, but. There are aspirations around the website generally. Um, it's not particularly user friendly, um, but these are all things that, yeah, the form is usually done as a hard copy and then sample. And things that actually for going forward we can take forward in terms of user friendliness of things. I absolutely agree um, in terms of finding things. Sometimes they're buried in document sections of things and it would just be easier if, it was, if there was a tab and you could find everything in one place. So we'll take that on board as part of the aspirational work around the website. <laughs> Um, so we meant we we mentioned. So I've just got a question. Sorry, yes, yeah. notice. Maybe it's just the way I'm reading it. Um, in the guidance fourteen talks about register of gifts and hospitality with a value of fifty pounds or more. I'm sure I just read in the form of twenty five pounds. Yeah. 
yeah, nine one in four disclosures say, have you received a gift of hospitality? Probably at least 25 pounds. The guidance, it's saying 50 pounds. So there's a, a number. Yeah, so the code um, at page 26 amended to 50 pounds from um, 25, so that, that's a typo which I can change. Yeah. Thank you. Well, it's possible to cancel the bill. Thank you. Um, any other comments about the form or the guidance on the form? Okay, very good. So um, the recommendation then is that um, A, the we note the amendments and suggestions, and um, B, that, that we refer the revised code and all the associated documents to initially the governance group to group, and then on heading on to council. Do we have the dates for that? Is that out of interest? We can. Governance group, hopefully, or being well subject to adoption of the meetings calendar in March, should be June, and then annual full council in July. Lovely. So um, I have to take that. Well, I think we should take those those recommendations together, don't we? Well, to start with, I'd just like to propose the recommendations. But I would like to say a few words um, and, and thanks to Sanjit so as well, because this has taken, I mean, there's so few words, the recommendations, it doesn't reflect all the work. Uh, that the Standards Committee has done for everybody. And um, I, I just look at it and think, yes, and I remember reading it all. I mean, it is a huge amount of work and it took hours for me to read that. Um, and then to go over it, and it took quite a few meetings, if I remember right, too. So I, I think that um, thanks should go really, to all of the committee and to all to the officers involved, um, in which it wasn't easy times, um, with COVID, with different types of meetings that we were having, other than face-to-face, -face, anything from hybrid to full, um, looking on teams, and it really was a big piece of work, and I'd like to say, but, uh, thank you, and thank you especially to Sanjit for all the work she's done. It has not been easy when you look at all the red bits in the in the document and things that were changed. Um, the LGA model, code model of uh, conduct, at least we had that, and um, I was grateful for that, and it did make sense. So why reinvent the wheel? So yes. Thank you. I would just like to forward, move the recommendation um, to accept A and B. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, yes, Chris. And I'd just like to echo that because as a new IP, the process of going through the working group was probably the best piece of induction that I've ever had to any post that I've ever been in uh, because it was so forensic, line by line. And we, without that, I wouldn't understand, and I don't think my colleagues would in, in any way, uh, as clearly as we do now, what our role and what everybody's, everybody else's role is. I've spoken to John about this, and he agrees, and I do like to echo the thanks, particularly Sanjit. And I'd like to say to John for his wisdom as well, even though he isn't here to, to, to hear it from the way. Yes, thank you. Uh, Councillor Mallander. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I'd, I'd also, you know, thank everyone as well. I'm happy to second uh, the proposal as well. Um, as chair of the uh, Member Development Committee, I think it's a bit early for it to go to the uh, the next one, which is actually this coming Monday. Um, but I'm sure we can get it on the agenda for a, for a following one. And um, they'll have to look at getting this um, um, rolled into the training uh, sessions that we'll have. And um, hopefully, we can do them um, face to face rather than online. Uh, because I think this is one that people are going to have lots of questions to come back. So we certainly did when we were going through the document. Um, so I think it's a good body of work and I'm happy to commend it. Thank you. So all those in have oh, a second for, for the recommendations, all those in favour? 
Thank you very much. And uh, now that, that we've done, yes, I'll, I'll, we've got that over the line. I'll join and uh, and uh, repeat those thanks. It's just look at your mind, you, doesn't it? Look back and look back at the minutes and uh, October. So, oh, let's set up a working group. And um, I think yes, on, on reflection, we've gone on with it and uh, worked hard and uh, not always necessarily initially agreed on things, but we've uh, we've um, discussed the issues clearly um, and uh, made some made the right decisions in the right way at the, at the right pace. So thank you very much. And um, we'll, um, we'll eagerly await the input of the uh, governance group and see what they've got to say about it first. Um, okay, so um, whilst we're not necessarily in a position to um, set another meeting, because I think the meeting schedules will be work we're working on soon, yeah, from, from March. Um, nevertheless, um, it perhaps helpful to have a think about what, where we might like to turn our attention um, to next. Um, Sanjeet's already, I think, mentioned earlier that one of the pieces of work that we um, have alluded to is process for bringing complaints in the first place. Um, and following the work that we've done so far, it follows that the committee should go on to consider the process for lodging a complaint, primarily the complaint form and how it's lodged. Um, therefore, I'd like to propose that at the next meeting we consider the process and the form itself to ensure that it remains relevant to the revised processes we've discussed in the meeting. Is that, are we happy with that? Very good. Um, one another kind of another suggestion perhaps for um another area of work for us to look at um is a, around um considerations for councillors when they're um, representing communities remotely um the you know whilst we're no longer having all of our meetings virtually um and, and some of the most of those regulations have fallen away um there's indications from government that um, that there's, there's merit in allowing hybrid meetings to take place in future. Um, and whilst that will require legislation, there remains scope to conduct some business through virtual platforms. Um, and the, the way that they're conducted, body language, facial expressions don't always appear on screen as they do if people are present in the room. Um, so how do members feel about their... About, about the about merit being in preparing guidance for conducting and participating in virtual meetings. Sorry, was you going to ask a question? Yeah, well, no, not really. I was just going to make a comment. Um, it, it seems to me that after um, COVID, things are going to be uh, different, and the public may be expecting um, different. Uh, I wasn't hugely fond of hybrid, I have to say, but I accept that it could work and it um, just had to put our minds to um, make it work. That's certainly me. Um, but I think that, yes, we do have to look at what can happen and what will happen in the future and how it will affect our council, but also our. Uh, the law will affect what we can do. Yeah, I was just going to ask a question. Um, I don't know of any complaints or public outrage or anything in relation, apart from where people are arguing and it becomes out of control but with there's that famous um, Anyway, so famous, I've forgotten the name. Harvard, oh, Harvard. So, yeah, Harvard, was it? Yeah, that's the group, yeah. So, <laughs> I suppose, are you, are you proposing that the, the Code of Conduct might address that kind of prevent behavior, this kind of situation? Is that, is that what we're looking at? If so, I think that's a great idea. It, it's really in terms of sort of considering where the, the, the direction of traffic is it's going at the moment. So if hybrid meetings did come into force, um, a lot of the complaints that I got 
early doors when we went into lockdown were around um, just how it played out on the screen. So it's very, very different to when you're in a room and you can you can get a lot from people's body language, you can gauge that, you know, as Kerry's like nodding, um, you, you can gauge those sorts of behaviours, whereas actually to somebody watching on the screen, it's not always completely apparent. And there are also things like, um, for example, in full council, we, we've got a we've got to get a hold, which Thankfully, I don't think it's ever been used. It's not been used while I've been here, but to call order to a meeting. Um, and it's actually, well, in a, in a virtual meeting, that's not necessarily going to be an option. So actually, what's the equivalent of that? Is it the mute button we're dealing with? Yeah, uh, for behaviour. So it's not it's not so much in terms of council meetings because the moment they can't happen virtually, although they may in the future. But councils have generally, parish council level, moved to a position where actually they are doing much more of the business consultative um, bits and bobs online and virtually and actually there's no clarity around behaviors in those mm. sort of circumstances so it, it is about though thinking about people watching it so that should should they be implemented things like using the virtual hand function um how how does the chair chair everything just a document around thinking a bit like the social media protocol that the standards committee established in terms of you know thinking before you post almost just sort of a think about how you're going to present yourself in a virtual forum because it, it is different um and but the members consider that's there's any merit in you doing that and thinking about that yeah i, I know we're not we don't want to sort of go into it now but yeah it fires up a few ideas in my mind that yes we would need to have in a meeting a set of procedural rules and everyone agrees to this is how you Draw attention at the moment, it's not described in any way in any meeting, is it? So, yeah, I, th I think so. Councillor Gray, um, is there also scope in this to, um, to, to make sure there is no blurring of the lines in between? I think a lot of people are experiencing with, with remote working, blurring lines between home and, and home work, home in the council chamber, the virtual council chamber. Whereas many people would, um, would enjoy a glass of wine at home in the evening, they would dream of bringing one into well, They may dream of bringing one into the council <laughs> chamber or something stronger, but they never would. They never would bring one into the council chamber. So just put, making sure those things are down and, and, and said it explicitly, so there's 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 no accidental blur on the fat line. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, yeah, but it's hard to come back to some, a long time ago talking to some former members of East Sussex County Council. We were bemoaning the fact that at the full council, when there was a dinner break in the middle of the full council, wine was no longer served because that used to be a normal thing, apparently. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, <laughs> not that I'm suggesting that we should do that, um, but yeah, I think we should definitely look into the hybrid way of working. Um, there's the three, three of us here on the forum, on the West Bishop Local Area Forum. Uh, we're doing apologies this evening. That meeting is happening online at the moment. Um, the intention is there, as with many work meetings, to move to a hybrid uh, one as well. Um, so that people who have got mobility issues or, or childcare uh, considerations or, or whatever can continue to attend and participate, um, even though they can't actually get to a physical meeting. Uh, I think it's very worthwhile. Are looking into how we best facilitate that as a council. Okay, so um, I think in that case, we're moving to the situation where I'm proposing that um, we ask um, the sort of monitor officers to prepare some draft guidance for us to consider at the next meeting. Not, okay, very good. Uh, and then um, a fi uh, final uh, comment, if you like. Um, is we've we, we've touched um, briefly before on um, lessons learned from the standards hearing panel that um, a number of us um, were were part of last summer, and uh, whilst it's a matter for the chair of a standards hearing pa panel to set that procedure, which may vary according to the circumstances. Um, the members agree that there's merit in reviewing the procedure for the hearing held last year as good practice. Um, the aim of the review will be to consider whether members could make any suggestions that may be helpful to a future panel. 
if following the review there are there are some suggestions um notwithstanding the chair's power to amend the procedure to fit the circumstances these may be brought back to the next committee um the committee is undertaking this the committee in undertaking this review accept that any future panel will not be bound by suggestions that come come out come out from that i mean sat on the um, panel myself um it very much um it was guided very well myself great job but it was uh we were saving in fresh seas so it, it's definitely a situation where we need to do the lesson learn thing what went well what didn't go so good uh, uh and what can we improve next time around so um, i would endorse that approach it's a good idea thank you any other comments comments okay very good so sorry um in that case, we recommend that we ask Mr. Silmondrick to, to arrange an informal meeting of the standards hearing panel to review and present any findings to the next meeting. I did, uh, following our conversation this afternoon, Chair, speak to Charlotte, and there is a report going to the um, one of the scrutiny groups, um, basically with an audit recommendation around reviewing and the reviewing a group's work as being good practice so this group could be the trailblazer in implementing that <laughs> um, so what I think coming out of my conversation with Charlotte was um, to prepare a template that then we could use perhaps at the proposed meeting for the review that the group um, uh, suggested this evening and then maybe use that as a model to carry forward for the groups but it's a good opportunity as well for other reasons. Trailblazer, that, that's the CV, and, and um, um, take that compliment for, uh, well, it wasn't quite a compliment, we'll take it as a compliment, even though it wasn't intended as such. Um, so, um, I think that's it. Um, so, I'll call the meeting to, um, to, to finish. Thank you very much.